Good day! Today, we are here to present to you our research study entitled Agony of Steel, Experiences and Coping Mechanism of Elite Student-Athletes with Competition Anxiety by Crystal Joy Matanog, Kyla Marie Solis, and Jenny May Tanguyo. According to Sagan's Medical Dictionary 2012, anxiety before or during athletic events can conflict with athletic results. When the body is in a stressed state, the synchronized activity needed by athletic activities becomes increasingly difficult. A certain amount of anxiety about how athletes doing in competition can be helpful. At the same time, negative patterns of thinking and expectations of failure can lead to a prophecy which fulfills itself. Elite athletes is person who is currently or has previously competed as a varsity player, individual or team, a professional player or a national or international level player. Elite athletes are at increased risk of injury. Thus, stated by Bali 2015, Kaplanova 2019, sports performance is associated with a multitude of various feelings. Sometimes, athletes feel the excitement and belief in achieving valued goals that bring them coveted happiness and satisfaction. They can feel also scared due to which they become nervous. Their muscles get tense, their stomach pains, the body becomes tight, the hands become clammy, and negative thoughts predominate them, and hence they start believing that they will never win. Moreover, Sisler et al. 2010, Ford et al. 2017, Coplanova 2019, Rice et al. 2019. During the competition, athletes' emotions are very intense and in some cases may grow into anxiety. Anxiety is an unpleasant mental state accompanied by a premonition of threat. Therefore, while cognitive threat anxiety is associated with negative thinking and fear of sports performance, emotional threat anxiety is associated with the perceptions of one's own physiological signs of activation, such as rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, shaking hands or feet, sweating, muscle stiffness, and others. Morphis et al. 2019, Coplanova 2019, Rice et al. 2019, Galagos et al. 2020. Athletes' emotions are therefore divided into pre-competitive, competitive, and post-competitive. The purpose of this phenomenological study is to determine the experiences of elite college student athletes in Tagum City. At this stage in the research, the central focus is to know on how they cope up with their anxieties, the somantic and cognitive anxieties, before and during competitions. In athletes' performance, anxiety symptoms are often present, although certain individuals are pumped up during the competitions. If the adrenaline rush is perceived as fear and negative thoughts take over, this may interfere with their ability, of course, to perform. Moreover, the intent of this study is to seek, listen, and understand the circumstances of the participants as they willingly share their experiences. In addition, this study aims to gain additional knowledge in the field of sports concerning all the elite student athletes. To analyze the process through which elite student athletes undergo and experience anxiety and stress before competition, the researchers opted to look at it in the lens of Hans Selye's psychological stress model or theory, general adaption syndrome, which thoroughly explains the stress response of people. According to Cineros 2012, Selye's general adaption syndrome is a model that shows the three phases which aims to describe the human body response to stress, alarm stage, resistance stage, and exhaustion stage. According to Weinberg and God 2003, page 87 to 88, multidimensional anxiety theory takes into account the somatic and cognitive anxiety and how they affect performance. This 
theory assumes that this states anxiety affect performance separately. That cognitive state anxiety is negative related to performance. That is increases in cognitive state anxiety lead to decreases in performance. According to Galusi 2008, catastrophe theory goes one step farther and proposes that the inverted U hypothesis holds true for somatic anxiety when cognitive anxiety is low, but that performance degrades more quickly when cognitive and somatic anxiety levels are both high. Additionally, cognitive anxiety improves performance when physiological arousal is low, but inhibits performance when arousal is high. And that was according to Hill and Williams 2008. This theory proposes that once the optimal level of arousal is exceeded, performance decreases rapidly. Furthermore, once an athlete has surpassed the optimal level, he or she must return to very lo low arousal rather, levels and attempt to rebuild appropriate arousal. Any research is made for the intention of providing benefits to a specific group. This phenomenological study would add to the value and purpose of educating Tagum City athletes. Will be applied especially to those aspiring athletes. Elite athletes are more likely to encounter that interferes with their ability to compete in competition than experienced professionals. Through this research, we are able to obtain ideas and information about what are the coping mechanisms and experiences of the elite college student athletes in Tagum City. This could give benefits to the sports organization of Philippines, the national sports associations. It is also beneficial to the Palarong Pambansa, Davao Region Athletics Association, Davao, and City Meet in Tagum City, Davao del Norte. To provide a richer strategy or techniques in coping with their anxieties. Moreover, to the future researchers, who are interested in conducting similar studies on elite athletes or comp competitive anxiety. Lastly, it is a useful source for schools that will be used by the coaches and administrations of the colleges. Anxiety, according to Tamori 2004, triggered by stressful stimuli and manifests itself in an individual's lack of adaptability on physiological, the behavioral, and cognitive levels. Elite athletes, professional performers, according to Jordan and Elferin Jemser in 2012. Inter varsity athletes, according to Stinger et al. 2010, and members of national squad, according to Bartelio et al. 2012. And lastly, athletes who were simply part of a competitive team according to Voss et al. 2010. Static anxiety, according to Cox 2010, Eunice and Nation 2011, Martens et al. 2011, that anxiety is closely related to physiological aspect of anxiety, which is involved physical symptoms such as rapid heart, rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, and muscular tension. Somatic anxiety is also a perception of a person's physiological change in the body. For example, sweat, tremble, increase of heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, and muscle tension. Cognitive anxiety. According to Winberg and Gold 2015, the physiological expression of anxiety and can be emotions, thoughts, feelings of terror, fear, worries, negative thoughts, frustration, and restlessness. Competitive anxiety. It is a kind of anxiety form in competitive situation in sports. The scope of this study is only among elite college student athletes in Sagam City. Preferably, our target in conducting this research are the elite student athletes who participated three times in national or international game. This is for the purpose to sufficiently and appropriately explore and achieve the main objective of this research. 
The study is focused of the experiences of elite athletes facing their competition anxieties. In addition, this is also focused on what are the coping mechanisms they do with their competition anxieties. Insights gained with the participants are also accounted. 15 participants are part of this study. Review of related literature. First is coping strategies. Research shows that coaches don't teach techniques for athletes to deal with. These forms of competitive stress for coaches, educational programs exist which address a broad range of subjects, including risk management, coaching techniques, and the advantages of a supportive environment. Youth coaches, however, do not integrate relaxation strategies into their coaching practices. Children could learn to cope with the pressure of youth sport and endure a more pleasant experiences. If coaches were to teach relaxation abilities, such as breathing techniques, this could lead children to remain engaged in sport for long periods of time. Based on the report, children feel stress and appear to have trouble using suitable methods to deal with it effectively. Simple methods such as deep breathing is successful in alleviating the negative effects of stress, but Research has focused on this method. Inglert and Bertram 2012, Kudlakova et al. 2013. Mental skills training. According to Holland 2010, So 2010, and Pozuardo's Key 2010, the success of a mental training program depends on how it is applied. In order to give the participant the best chance of succeeding, Many sports psychologists adopt an efficient sports psychology system. It implies that it is important to use careful and considered methods within an applied context. Four phases must be incorporated to help the counselor create a successful MST or mental skills training program. The first phase is the initial phase. A strong consultant-customer relationship has been found to help to improve and sustain the efficiency of enhancement interventions. This process includes the coach meeting the athlete and discussing the athlete's individual needs. In conclusion, there are several resources available for use in MST by psychologists. As described earlier, MST is an efficient way to help athletic success, providing proper adherence to the methods. There is ample evidence to indicate that the key explanation why MST projects succeed or fail is the athlete consultant relationship. Mesagno, 2010. Cognitive and Somatic Anxiety. Stated by Pardabas et al., 2013. The level of anxiety affects the success of athletes. Cognitive anxiety is a propensity to dwell on failure. These are negative thoughts associated with disruption of concentration followed by success. Somatic anxiety is a spectrum of reactions that a person can experience. Excessive sweating, elevated heart rate, shakiness, and tension are part of them. Elite athletes will view their cognitive anxiety as more of a success facilitator. Even those professional athletes who prior to competition experience elevated levels of state anxiety are more competitive than their peers. Arousal. According to Winberg and Gold 2015, it is the physiological and psychological reactions of the individual and refers to the state of action of strength that motivates the individual to perform a particular moment. Um, the level of arousal may have a positive and negative effect on the output of individuals. For example, um, elevated arousal or anxiety may cause increased muscle tension, the fatigue, and loss of concentration. Therefore, an increase in drive like arousal, state anxiety, and stress is correlated with an increase in performance. 
such as the more excited an athlete is, the better he will perform before a game. How qualified the athletic is, however, it matters if the ability levels of the athlete is not high. Performance can gradually worsen as arousal increases. Increases rather. Competitive anxiety. According to Esfahani and Soflo 2010, a psychological variable proven to have a negative effect on athletic success if it is not held in check in competitive anxiety. It has been shown that in the time leading up to the during competition, less experienced athletes experience a steady increase in anxiety, while experienced athletes often experience an increase in anxiety in the pre-event time and a decline in anxiety just before and during competitions. Stress is also considered a problem for athletes rather than a condition outside the control. Thus, when the athletes consider their own talents and their, and their teammates as the tools required to meet the challenge, there might be no perceived need to, for social help. This mindset causes some athletes to experience tension with positive feelings, such as enthusiasm or excitement. For those who experience negative feelings linked to stress events due to their high profile as an athlete, they are less likely to accept access to help or fear about being vulnerable or lack of confidentiality in order to regulate their emotions and maintain their athletic connect concentration rather they can disregard their feelings or use avoidance strategies athletic burnout can resort result from chronic stress lack of social support and negative social experiences stated Watson 2016, DeForest and Smith 2014. Motivation. Intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation takes place when a person is engaged in an activity in order to achieve results that are not self-determined and because of external pressures. These acts are experiences. Extrinsically motivated athletes in sports pursue incentives rather than achieving their goals and aligning their acts with their beliefs. There are four types of extrinsic motivation that vary in their relative autonomy and their concept of self-determination principles implying that various forms of intrinsic motivation can possibly be self-determined and are recognized as external regulation, interjected regulation, established regulation, and integrated regulation. While motivation for athletes is an important concept to understand, it is also very important to understand the variables that determine why or how an athlete experiences these different forms of motivation. Stated by Hodge and Lonsdale, 2011, Horn, Bloom, Bergland, and Pockard, 2011. Research Design This qualitative method introduced the investigation of finding out the coping mechanisms of elite student athletes. This is also showing the strategy on how elite students overcome their competitive anxieties. The approach to this study is in qualitative form. The presented study applied the phenomenological method of research. As stated by Waters 2016, the goal of qualitative phenomenological research is to describe a lived experience of phenomena. According to Christensen, Johnson, and Turner 2010, the primary objective of a phenomenological study is to explicate the meaning structure and essence of the lived experiences of the person or group of people around a specific phenomenon. Phenomenology does not begin with a theory but instead begins with a phenomenon under consideration. Since we will be into studying the experiences and coping mechanisms of elite student athletes with competition anxieties, this will fit the phenomenological approach. 
Then, a phenomenon of interest to study is identified. In the study, the student athletes will be delved deeper on the discussion on the experiences and coping mechanisms with the competition anxieties, which the phenomenological study is the most effective method. Role of the researcher. If you're afraid of failure, you don't deserve to be successful. Most often, student athletes have competitive anxieties because they are afraid of failing. This is the reason why we conduct this study. As a citizen of Tagum City and student of University of Mindanao, we want to know the experiences of student athletes during their competitions. Most often, many elite student athletes experiencing competitive anxieties even though they are winning many times in national and international competitions. We are delighted to find out the truth about this phenomenon. In this paper, we the researchers play different roles such as moderator, recording person, and transcribers. According to Dornier 2007, qualitative data is the most frequently obtained by interviews and questionnaires by the researchers. Nevertheless, interviews are more, most, more effective rather at gathering narrative data compared to questionnaires, enabling researchers to explore the opinions of individuals as greater data. According to Vail 1996-2003, Primary researchers will perform the groundwork of this report, including the rules of disseminating procedures, procedures to co-researchers, assigning assignments, determining obligations, and most of having strengthening trust confidence within the community. The researchers are performing their task diligently and promptly. The authors of this study will facilitate the focus group discussion or FGD and the in-depth interview, interview or IDI. There will be field notes and documentations, questions to be answered and posed in the discussion will be established and voice recording will be encouraged. So for the chapter 3, the methodology. So this phenomenological study is focused on the experiences and coping mechanisms of elite athletes with their anxieties. So the methods of their competition anxieties will be studied. Further, it expresses the insights of elite student athletes on the journey of competition. Research design. So according to Presswell 2013, a phenomenological study describes the meaning for several individuals describing what all participants have in common as they experience a phenomenon. So research problems to be framed as open-ended questions that will support discovery of new information in which it perfectly matched to the study the researchers are undertaking. So the goal of qualitative phenomenological research is to describe a lived experience of a phenomenon this is according to Waters 2016. So according to Christian Sen, Johnson and Turner 2010, the primary objective of phenomenological study is to explicate the meaning, structure, and essence of the lived phenomenon. This study concentrated the experiences and coping mechanism of the elite student athletes. The comments and behaviors of participants during the course of the study further contribute to the data provided by the participants. Below is a de description and explanations of methodology beginning and participants. The procedures for collecting data and analysis of data are also defined. Role of the researcher. If you're afraid of failure, you don't deserve to be successful. Most often, student athletes have competitive anxieties because they are afraid of failing. This is the reason why we conduct the study. As a citizen of Tagum City, a student of the University of Mindanao, we want to know the experiences of student athletes during their competitions. Most often, many elite student athletes experiencing competitive anxieties 
even though they are winning many times in national in and international competitions. We are delighted to find out the truth about this phenomenon. In this paper, we the researchers play different roles such as demo, such as moderator, recording person, and transcribers. According to um, Dorney 2007, qualitative data is most frequ frequently obtained by interviews and questionnaires. Nevertheless, interviews are more effective at gathering narrative data compared to the questionnaires enabling researchers to explore the opinions of the individuals at the greater detail, according to Kiale, 1998-2003. So the authors of this study will facilitate the focus group discussion, or known as the FGD, and the in-depth interview, or the IBI. There will be field notes and documentation questions to be answered and posed in the discussion will be established and the voice recording will be encouraged. Research participants. So according to Dornier 2007, the participants were taken from the representations in this phenomenological study. The size of a focus group ranges from 6 to 10, sometimes 12 individuals. So the capacity of collective wisdom will be limited by less than 6 individuals, whereas Two broad and scales make it hard for anyone to, to participate. So the two main technical questions to decide when designing a focus group discussion are whether to include homogeneous or heterogeneous individuals in a group and how many groups to have. So the analysis will have 15 participants. Any of them ideally suffer competitive anxieties. So these participants are also Tagum City residents and have participated in numerous national and international competitions. In order to attain the purpose of the report, it is to ensure a fair evaluation. There will be 15 participants for in-depth interview. To be part of the story, they will be collected equitably. So these informants and participants are selected using a non-probability sampling method in which the samples of participants are chosen on the basis of the researcher's subjective judgment. So this sampling technique gives researchers autonomy to choose a population that they are interested in studying that is according to Lund Research 2012. Non-probability sampling methods such as purposeful sampling may give researchers clear theoretical reasons for their subjects to be included in the sample while pursuing a qualitative research design. So this approach involves the writers using their subjective points, or I mean opinions, drawing, drawing on theory and experience, and diving into the nuances of the problem being studied. Data collection. Using two approaches, which are the focused group discussion, or FGD, and the in-depth interview, or IDI, the process that will be used to collect the data will be performed. The basis of this research will also be materials of others, scientists, and dissertations are relevant to our research. Method of data collection help researchers to collect more information and to conduct first-hand interviews. Frietas et al. according to the focus group discussion in 1998, enables group interactions, produces qualitative data, and affects each other of their opinions, responses, and contribution during the discussion. In collecting the data, the following steps will be used. First, in order to meet the number of participants in the sample, a purposeful sampling technique would disseminate information to the participants and encourage them to engage in conversation, not implement it. An invitation will be sent to the target participants, and if their free will be to grant it or not. In order to comply with the conditions stipulated that their participants is voluntarily and they are willing to participate in research, they will be asked to sign the informed content. The aims of the interview will be presented in order not to confuse the participants. Second, 
Subject addressed during interviews will be transcribed and documented while the data to be shared by the interviewees will be documented in detail. Some of the benefits of in-depth interviews are accurate details about the thoughts and behaviors of the persons about subject or to help them to discuss problems in in-depth. This includes incentives one-on-one -on -one interviews in order to uncover perspective on an idea, especially on the informants' insights into the family's accountant's financial operation. The primary benefit is the collecting of more accurate information and providing the interviewee with a more relaxed environment. That is according to Boyce and Neil 2006. In order to create a textural description of the participants' experiences or what they are encountered, a structural description of their experiences, and, and a mixture of the textural and structural descriptions, a phenomenological study of the interview transcripts was carried out to express the overall, overall meaning of the encounter. According to it is according to Creswell 2007. Interpretative Phenomenological Analysis or the IPA offers the researcher the best chance to understand the live experiences of the study participants in the in innermost deliberation. The Interpretative Phenomenological Study approach as a participant-oriented approach encourages the interviewees or the research participants to articulate themse themselves and their live experiences stories as they see fit without any distortion and or prosecution. In a qualitative research study, therefore, the use of the IPI method reiterates the fact that its primary objective and essence is to exp explore the live experiences of the research participants and encourage them to narrate the research resort, resort, results through their live experiences according to Al Alase and Aboyomi 2017. The main data collection technique in this phenomenological study primarily involves in-depth interview or the IDI with the participants. A phenomenological interview is the intended to explain the sense of a phenomenon experienced by many people, by many people. Often, multi multiple interviews with each of the research participants are conducted in phenomenological studies. It is according to the Creswell 2007 and Marshall and Rosemont 2006. Thrustworthiness. So according to Shenton 2004, researchers must be careful on the issues faced by the participants in a phenomenological study. It is an awareness to ensure criteria for good, for good research practices is a vital need to conduct such qualitative research. Thrustworthiness and credibility are the values that must be kept in mind for the whole duration of the dissertation. So in order to ensure the trustworthiness of a qualitative study, four, four criteria rather were advocated which we used in this study. These criteria are credibility, transferability, dependability, and confirmability. Credibility. According to Len Korn YS 2010, it is the equivalent of internal validity in quantitative research and is concerned with this aspect of truth value. Strategies for increasing credibility includes selection of context, participants, and approach to gathering data. Investigators with various perspectives, prolonged engagement, triangulations, peer debriefing, negative case analysis, and member chat. Transferability. In terms of what techniques they allow to create transferability, each school is distinct. But here we will stick to the advice of Lencoin and Guba 1985 to provide a thick overview of phenomenon. For those who have taken a methodology course that include an ethnography analysis, 
a thick summary can sound familiar and good for you to remember. In particular, it is a technique used extensive by ethnographic researcher, but it is a technique that can also be used by other qualitative researchers. In particular, thick description is a methodology in which a qualitative researcher offers a robust and thorough account of their data collection experiences. A qualitative investigator makes direct ties to the cultural and social dynamics underlying the collection of data. This includes talking about where the interviews took place, the ability of respondents to the perform and interview after work, which can be ex-hosting, and other data collection aspects that helps provide a deeper and more complete interpretations of the study environment. Confirmability. In order to achieve confirmability, researchers must must show that the observations are specifically related to the observations in a way that can be followed and repeated as a process. Its importance to implementation is con comparable to that in integrity, where confirmability has clear consequences for studies delivering policy recommendations. In qualitative research, in terms of their way of categorizing truth for example, the philosophical and epistemological position of the research will determine of both the problem and predisposition of the researcher, according to Moon and Blackman 2014. Ethical considerations. Participants and informants who take part in the study are highly protected and respected as they have been the main contributors to our research and are paving the way for us to be successfully conduct this research. So, establishing ethical consideration in conducting this study is necessary to provide neutrality and prevent conflict in the process. It is recommended to engage in ensuring that these subjects are not coerced and compelled yet. They are well informed about the research and have asked for, for, for permissions to an invitation to take part in it. In carrying out this study, there is substantial participation in ensuring the ethical concerns of conducting research. Respect for person is the root for the moral rules of educated citizens is the root for the consent of confidentiality. The researcher is usually obliged to obtain approval from a research subject for the study enrollment. The research participants must have the cognitive capacity to make the choice in order to inform consent to be true. Be so situated as they freely choose, have sufficient knowledge, and understand what is at stake in the decision. Informed consent may not be needed where it cannot be obtained feasibly and involvement in the research presents only minimal risk. In order to preserve the confidentiality of the personal information of the study subject, researchers must also take the necessary measures. Beneficence. It is the ethical principle of beneficence applies to the be of profit, do not hurt. It was Hippocratic principle. The concept of beneficence requires the ethical mandate to do meaningful and relevant research in order to be better represent and support the well-being of our constituents. Beauchamp and Childress say, Beneficence, especially in qualitative research, is often difficult to predict when developing a hypothesis. When a researcher wants to discover personal information about the lives of the subjects, he needs to deal with digging up old wants. All potential results of the analysis must be weighed by a researcher and the risk must be balanced with a proportionate rather benefit. Confidentiality. It is closely related to the freedom of charity, respect for honesty, and loyalty, according to Len Vine 2004. 
argues that privacy implies that people are free to give and without as much information as they want to the person they want. The researcher is responsible for maintaining confidentiality beyond ordinary loyalty. Justice. It is the ethical duty to distribute the benefits, and the benefits can be described as the burden of study is rational. Research researchers have a responsibility to ensure that the means used to select participants in research are equal. Researchers must not abuse the disadvantage or exclude those who stand to benefit from study participation for good purpose. Each criterion must be accompanied by clear justification in the study protocol in order to, for the proposed eligibility criteria to be evaluated. The inclusion of disadvantaged groups such as children, incompetent adults, or inmates requires strong justification to prove that they are not merely targeted for convenience. In addition, the research population should, to the degree feasible and practicable, to mirror the clinical population of the target. A number of current efforts to encourage their inclusion in cl clinical research have, been con have contributed to the historical inclusion of children, women, and ethnic, ethnic minorities from the benefits of research. It is also required by the principle of justice that provisions be in position to reimburse study participants affected by study enrollment rather as a result of research it was according to Children's JF 2004. Result the purpose of this phenomenological study was to describe and understand the experiences of the elite student athlete in battling their competition anxiety. This study investigates also how the elite student athletes cope up with those experiences. The following research questions were raised. Number one, what are the experiences of elite athletes in battling anxiety? Number two, how do they cope up with the experiences? And number three, what insights do athletes can share on their experiences in battling anxiety? Interviews were composed for the total of 15 participants, 7 for the in-depth interview, and 8 for the focused group discussion. The participants were only among elite student athletes for more than three consecutive games in national or international competitions. Our participants are all resident in Tagum City. Instead of stating the individual's real names, screen names are utilized to conceal their identities. They were presented on Table 1. On the other hand, the gathering of participants was planned according to their preferences. An invitation letter was issued to each target prior to the interview dates and it was agreed based on their free and available time. An informed consent form was also issued to ensure that ethical considerations were taken into account during the study's execution. Categorization of data. So the data was analyzed using the audio file captured and transcriptions prepared by the researcher after in-depth interview and focus group discussion. So during the analysis, steps such as data reduction, data interpretation, and data representation were taken. So these processes assist the study team in scrutinizing and evaluating the information gathered. First, data reduction entails reading and listening to the recording multiple times in order to obtain comprehensive data. It organizes information into groups by classifying and categorizing it. So second, data information is the process of giving labels to group of people. Themes are formed from the data reduction clusters and they interpret the themes to answer study questions. Lastly, data representations involve reading this data, categorizing and classifying it, 
and developing a thematic analysis inductively. The examined topics are used to create the story or narrative found in the tables, stated by Bill Lips, 2012. So, for the first question, what are the experiences of elite athletes in battling anxiety? The themes are tensed, encourage positivity, expect the possible result, and extended self-regulated. The second question, how do they cope up with the experiences? The themes are self-concentration, self-driven, self-learning, and team encouragement. The third question is what insight do athletes can share on their experiences in battling anxiety? The themes are self-control, sustainability of the positive thinking, mind conditioning and setting, and self-preparation. Go. The second question, how do they cope up with experiences? The themes are self-concentration, self-driven, self-learning and team encouragement the third question is what insight do athletes can share on their experiences in battling anxiety the themes are self-control sustainability of the positive thinking mind conditioning and setting and self-preparation yeah. this question and conclusion so this chapter presented the analysis and conclusions of the primary themes and analysis that were derived from the research questions of the study. It also discusses the implications and practice for future researchers' assistance based on the themes identified during data analysis. This qualitative study focuses on the experience of student elite athletes in dealing with anxiety. So the purpose of this research is to highlight, explain, define, and comprehend the experiences of student elite athletes with anxiety. So certainly, the various coping techniques were investigated in this study. Also, experiences on dealing with their anxiety competition where it is significantly accounted. Lastly, it is useful ideas from student elite athletes' experiences were shared. So overall, the purpose of this work is to investigate and develop a unique or distinct concept and application of student elite athletes' competitive anxiety. According to Creswell 2013, the approach used phenomenological study. It emphasizes what the people have gone through and how they have dealt with those events. The similarities between the participants while they are involved in a phenomenon are described through phenomenological investigation. So the effects of competition anxiety in student elite athletes are, and are investigated in this research. The basic purpose of phenomenology is to extract the essence of the common experiences. In an interview, the role of interviewer and interviewee are key determinants that focus on understanding interviewers' experiences or behaviors. Moreover, this inspires us, the researchers, to do research on this incredible experience in order to learn how student elite athletes cope up with the competitive anxiety. Student elite athletes' anxiety experiences are difficult to manage because it will affect their performance in competition. It is difficult, but the process offers valuable lessons about anxiety management. Hence, it is a really an interesting endeavor for us because the findings will have an impact on the sports fields of our professional players and later our future athletes. The first question, experiences of an elite athlete in battling anxiety. The first theme reveals tense. Among student athletes, nervousness and pressure is to ignite in them when it comes to their experiences, they must control their anxiety and responsible in their games. The impact of pressure and nervousness on athletes should be concerned for all athletic trainers. Many athletes deal with tense 
Each athlete reacts to pressure and anxiety in their own unique way. Moreover, student elite athletes must always put in their minds their efforts during trainings so they can avoid being pressured and nervous. According to Baylock 2012, if an athlete feels under pressure, it is most often because they believe they are being held to a standard expectation like pressure or imaginary projections into the future. When athletes imagine that might happen if the intended objective is not reached, they often feel under pressure. The second theme pertains to encourage positivity. Even though athletes feel so much pressure and tense during or before the competition, still they think positively. Additionally, they encourage not just themselves as single, single rather individual, but as an entire team, they have the same goal. According to Has Chigord Jads 2012, positive thinking has been proven that to have the strongest and most positive relationship with state of self-confidence, indeed, research including athletes who were thought in the use of the positive thinking have found that they have lower pre-competition anxiety and higher levels of confidence. The third theme refers to expected the possible result. Expectation can put athletes under strain because of what others anticipate from them in terms of performance. Others have high expectation of them, wanting them to pay their effort by winning the competition. Nevertheless, competition is not always about winning. We will also suffer defeat in order to push harder for the future sporting competition. To reiterate, sports teach them to value of failure of both a micro and macro level. Athletic pursuits are made up of triumphs and defeats, whether they are practiced or competed. It's critical to accept triumph with humi humility rather and to endure fa failure with dignity. No matter what game you're playing in line with this, accepting that not every gamble will pay off, that not every game will end in a win, and not every play will go your way and essential to playing well. It's not an option to be crippled by grief. The same is true in life. Coaches' expectation have the potential in influence how athletes absorb their sports accomplishments cognitively. Examining the apparent causes of behavior or reflecting on what produce performance outcomes may be part of that process that is according to Darley and Frazus 2013. The last theme is extended self-regulated. The ability to remain calm, cope with strong emotions, adapt and respond correctly to our surroundings. Athletes know how to regulate themselves as much as more likely to, to be successful in game and achieve goal. Furthermore, athlete believes that they can accomplish anything when they are confident. They believe that they can do any skill and taking on any task. When people lack confidence, they are afraid of failing, and this can have significant impact on our ideas, behavior, and emotions. According to Kit Chantas 2018, self-regulation is frequently mentioned rather by elite athletes and coaches as one of the most essential components in their success. The term self-regulation in sports refers to the athlete's self-initiated thoughts, feelings, and behaviors to achieve specific goals. Self-regulation model with social cognitive cycle structure that describes important self-regulatory processes and motivating beliefs. For the second question, coping mechanism of an elite athlete. 
For the first theme, it refers to self-concentration. This is to focus on one subject, goal, or thought being without being distracted. It is the ability to focus the attention and ignore those unrelated thoughts. An athlete who concentrates will absorb the information needed to make good judgments, judgments such as responding to an opponent or adopting to the surroundings. Athletes who can focus well make sound decisions in a competitive setting and build general self-confidence. Indeed, self-concentration self rather is an important factor to an athlete. So according to Hammond 2014, one aspect of the multidimensional phenomenon of attention is concentration. The phrase has been particularly useful in the sport, psychology, literature, in the study of skill, failure under pressure, and in the field of skill learning. Concentration techniques are an important part of these mental exercises that performers use before doing self-paced skills. It proposed treatments for improving performance, particularly under pressure. Support the idea that the information on which a performer focuses in the seconds leading up to skill execution is a crucial determinant to performance. For the second theme, it is self-driven. So the ability of each person to make decisions and govern their own life is referred to as self-driven. So this skill is crucial to one's psychological health and well-being. People who have self-driven belief, they have control over their choices and life. Individuals that are self-driven have a better sense of control over their behavior, which is favorably associated with long-term physical exercise participation. So according to DASI 2013 and according to the self-determination theory, or SDT, the athletes work with move through movement patterns faster and express higher enjoyment in the training process. Additionally, when there is a lot of personal interaction, there is a higher level of training adherence. So for the third theme refers to self-learning. So we refocus our attention and the lesson itself by learning at our own pace. Athletes are unburdened by pressure and are focused on learning knowledge. Aside from improved memory performance, Athletes also learn from their experiences and play. They are learning and exploring new things in a variety of subjects. The student's self-learning is a deductive pedagogical process characterized by the student's major responsibility for the planning and evaluation of his training experience. The coach acts as a facilitator in order to achieve the goal of exerting control over the social environment under activities. It was stated by Tolo and Limon 2019. Go. The last theme for this question pertains to team encouragement. Encouragement of teamwork leads to player communication on working together to solve difficulties and reach a common objective both of which will benefit players in the future, both in and out of sport. A friend that enjoys sports as much as they do bringing yourself and your teammates closer together will increase their motivation to battle for one another on the field. The working atmosphere is crucial in creating ha a happy and motivated staff. The last question is, it's all about the insight that athlete can share on their experiences in battling anxiety. The first theme reveals self-control. It is the all acts of the self-control such as the emotion management, the persistence, and after an initial act of the self-control, this strength might be temporarily drained, impairing performance in subsequent acts of self-control. Uh, controlling one's impulses or the behavioral tendencies is critical for a top-level performance in sports. Uh, for example, it is the, play the player must lower their anxiety levels in high-pressure 
pressures his situation um, in order to become calmer and more focused on the game. And self-control is required for a wide range of sport and experience, exercise behaviors, including the greater athletic performance. It is stated by the Engler 2016. Athlete must manage their cognitive, the emotional, and the physical process, as well as their behavioral tendencies in order to perform their best in sports, and it is stated by Englert and Bertram's 2012. And also, it is stated by Wagstaff 2014. And athlete must control their anxiety levels in pressure situation. For example, the athletic competition, it stated by Englert and Beltrams 2012, force themselves to work persistently on physical demanding exercises. It is according also by the Wagstaff, Wagstaff 2014, or force themselves to stick to workout plans for long periods of time. It is stated by Martin G G Guinness and Bray 2011. So for the second theme, it is the sustainability of the positive thinking. Positive thinking is a broad word that encompasses self-affirmations or I feel or they feel strong, they feel stay focused under pressure. Pictures of successful goal achievement, for example, the winning, winning a big competition and ideas that express optimism and unchanging self-belief. And also, positive thinking has been proven to have a strongest and most positive relationship with state self-confidence. Indeed, research including athletes who have been educated in the use of the positive thinking have found that they have lower pre-competition anxiety and a higher level of the confidence, as well as more accommodating interpretation, interpretation rather, of the anxiety symptoms. Moreover, positive thinking leads to increase their self-assurance, which helps the skill execution and also their performance. Albert Bandura's source, sources of self-efficacy, it is provided some advice on how to establish a positive mindset and also to increase their sporting confidence. Athletes, for example, can be tough to think more opti or rather optimistically by using a specific positive, self-administered and verbally uh, persuasive um, cues. It is according to William J.M. 2015 theme refers to the mind conditioning and setting. It is the process of teaching your mind to change your thoughts, the attitudes, and also the beliefs in order to accept new thinking, patterns, the tendencies, and or the mental states, and as a result, or as a result rather, it improve your performance. Your mental outlook and how it aids to hinder your performance in competition is known as the mindset. Some exceptional athletes rely on the, only on their innate ability. And these athletes believe that they can turn on a, on a switch to perform on their peak in the face of the adversity. An exceptional athlete, on the other hand, has a next level of mindset. Mind conditioning is a state of a, of a good performance or a mental function that leads to productive activities, satisfying the interpersonal interactions and also the ability to adapt to change and cope with adversity. It is according to William Mann, 2015. The last theme it is the self-preparation. It is the discipline with two distinct advantages. The first is that it helps you to get closer to your objective you uh you have already made up your mind about it you are getting closer to your goals by getting ready to achieve them and the second key is the advantages of self-preparation is that it allows you to to re-energize your objective which is very essential to the athlete in that self-preparation is a very important the personal elements, the motivational factors, and also the mental consideration 
are all psychological aspects that must be considered for top performance in sports. All of these components must interact constructively in order for performance to establish a harmonic state of the preparedness. Preparedness, preparedness physically and psychologically and also your emotionally in order to achieve excellence in athletic activities. This could be accomplished by devising techniques to prepare and it is stated by Ikalayut 2016. Concluding remarks. The experiences of elite student-athletes with competition anxiety cause our curiosity and ignite our want to learn more about, listen to, and dig deeper into their different path. Many athletes across the world would love participating in sports. Athletes typically begin at an early age and acquire a great enthusiasm for the game. Athlete in today's age are consumed by much more than their sport. They must prioritize other responsibilities such as education, family, and leisure time. Many individuals in contemporary society are athletes. The implications of becoming an athlete includes time consumption, character development, and various levels of anxiety. We tend to exaggerate the idealism we have inside about the life and experiences of the athletes, yet it's too far from reality. Their life is not a spoon-feeding situation that all, this, all their desires and goals as a team to win in, in every competition will be granted immediately. They need to work hard in it and train themselves every day. A lot of competition anxiety they've experienced and they have to embrace it and conquer. It is difficult to deal with competition anxiety. These are just a few of the typical issues that athletes have been dealing with. Oh. Even undergoing a lot of competition anxiety, the best is that those experiences thought athlete valuable lesson that they could bring and use for a lifetime. They could use those to mold and guide them in making themselves grown to be a better player. Among those lessons are self-concentration and self-driven, self-learning and team encouragement. This did contribute vitality to the athlete to conquer their competition anxiety. Overall, we must go through the difficult process of life. Life changes rather. Similar to the butterfly metamorphosis, we will go through life ups and downs, different issues and concerns, so that after we have been wonderfully molded on the inside and out, we may enter the doorway of the next adventure and stride ahead with great courage and bravery. As a result, great athletes are like butterflies, bringing significant life lessons with them, and they may soar even higher, soaring and with full colors up to the sky and achievement, conquering their competition anxieties.